Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome to the new moon ceremony for February 2022 and the Imolk ceremony, the Celtic cross quarter day. So I'm so happy that all of you have chosen to come. If you would please in the chat, put your name and where you are in, in the world um, so that I will be able to see who's, who's here because I, um, you know, this is not a registered event, so I don't get to know who intended to come, but if you will just put your name and where you're from and anything you'd like to say, but just your name would be very beneficial to me so I can look back later and see, um, see who was here. Ah, yeah. And Gwen is in, in Southern Maine. Yeah. And Shanti from Toronto. We have some from Black Mountain uh, here in North Carolina, where I am. And Maria is coming in from Florida. Uh, and just, oh, so many lovely people here. Uh, Mary in Wisconsin. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I'm very, very happy that you're here. And, and just keep um, keep posting in the chat so that I'll know you know where you where you are and who actually came today, because otherwise I have no record of of you being here, and I want to know who came, who joined us today. Uh, so today I'm honoring um, both Imolk and the New Moon. February 1st or February 2nd is a, a number of different days. Um, it's, it's the Celtic Imog, uh, but it's also in Ireland often called St. Bridget's Day. It's called Candle Mass. It's Groundhog Day on the, on the 2nd. A few more days ahead, it's Valentine's Day. And tomorrow I start, uh, it's a, a new day for me. I start a new class called Weaving Our Soul Memory with Earth and Nature, very much connected to what we're doing today. So, um, and if you're interested in that, please do go to my uh, website. Let me, um, let me post that in case you don't already have it. There's my uh, email. I'm, I'm sorry, our, my website address uh, in the chat there. Oh, Ellen, a friend of Trisha's. All right. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very happy to have all of you coming in. Uh, but so all these these uh, sacred days that we're talking about are, are all connected they are a part of honoring the spark of life that leads to rebirth and today as we light candles we light the gentle flames of the winter that will become the roaring fires of beltana in may so as we step into today into this cauldron of inspiration and creativity. I'd like to introduce you to my friends here on, on the wall because they'll be traveling with us today. Um, so let's see if I can, can remember to, to go through them all. Behind me here, of course, is, is one of a depiction of the moon. This one looks like a male, but you know, the moon is known as, as masculine and as feminine. There are probably just as many uh, gods as there are goddesses, <clears throat> excuse me, associated with the moon. So that's, you know, there's no limit on that. And then this is the black bear who will travel with us today into the darkness, into introspection as we go through this. And the pyramids above me are to help us stay in, in connection with the stars as we go through and then the blue for me represents the dark moon the moon in its dark phase so i've chosen to put the blue out for it and then this is this is the person of all the beings here uh, among us and these are the the 
chakras, the aura from the chakras coming out from the individual as we open and expand and become one with all that is, then we are more able to remember that we have these energy centers in us and connected into it. And then the sun and the moon here, and then an image of the goddess, I like to call her the Kaliak, which is the, uh, the Celtic original goddess. And next to her wrapped, I have a couple of, of paintings of spring flowers wrapped in green because we are slowly moving from the winter. That's what Imbolc is about, moving from the winter, expecting the spring as it comes along. So these will journey uh, with us today as, as we go into ceremony. And um, if you have brought any candles or anything with you to ceremony, before I call the directions, let me just talk a little about symbolism that, that may go with the, uh, the different elements. For the center, actually, let me bring my little uh, I have a tray here with lots of, of my goodies on it. I don't know that, that you can see the tray, but I'll, I'll show you what I have here. Uh, that I'm working with today. I have um, for the center, um, I have a white candle that's over to the side burning. I also have this one that's burning that has uh, crystals and herbs in it. And so I'm burning the white candle for the light and a red candle for Bridget, since we are moving toward the, the springtime. And if you have a yellow candle, you can burn that for the spring flowers for Imbolc. And with the elements, the element of air, mm, smell is a part of the element of air. And I have a spring flower in a pot with the goddess Isis to carry with me as we go through the directions with the air. And when we get to the south, I have been burning um, and, and smudging for quite some time here. But if you uh, burn sage and sweet grass, and one of the things that you can add for M, uh, for M bulk is the uh, frankincense, and then of course rosemary. So you can burn your um, herbs, or you can simply clear the air with the herbs. I have dried sage and I have fresh rosemary for clearing the air. And the water, as we go to the west, I have sacred water from Ishnock in Ireland. This is from Saint, one of St. Bridget's wells. Ishnock is the spiritual heart of Ireland, the center. And so the dark goddesses are protecting the holy water as we move forth today. And then in the center behind me are the pyramids um, to keep us connected with, with the stars. Let me move my tray over so I can get to my other things here. And as I call the directions here in, in just a moment, I will have in my hands two pyramids. This one is white moonstone and black moonstone carved into a pyramid. And this is a black moonstone in my other hand in the shape of a pyramid. I'm also wearing um, black moonstone, one of, one of my earrings. And I have my, I don't think you can see it back here, but I have my other moonstone on in honor of, of what we're doing today. So, and I'm in my, my dark goddess robes for, uh, for ceremony. So I'm sorry you can't see the, the robes very well, but this is um, online. It's the best we can do with it all. So um, I will call the directions. If you know the directions in your home where you are, Please join me and, you know, move toward um, each of these directions as we do this, or just sit where you are uh, and 
watch the screen or close your eyes as we go through it. So I start with the center, the divine center, the opening of the highest good flowing down around us. And we call you to come with us to ceremony today as we open and begin another new journey. And I say, thank you. And I turn to the east. I turn to the east with the Celtic god Lu and the goddess Anya of the sun who bring the illumination and let it flow down upon us, the light from the sun to light our path, to show the way as we go on this journey of life and as we go on our journey around the medicine wheel and ceremony today. Thank you. Thank you for coming and lighting the way. And I turn to the south. Mm. The south, the brilliant midday sun, and the direction of laughter and joy and dance, of rhythm and harmony and beauty. Ah, and I say thank you, thank you, thank you. And Bridget stands in the south, Bridget calling us to open to our creativity, to be all that we can be and express it in whatever ways that we are able to do and expand our creativity wherever possible. And beside Bridget is the Orin Moor, the Celtic direction of creating the earth, the Orin Moor with the sound, with the vibration brought the world into existence. And we say thank you to Bridget and Orrin Moore. Thank you to the fires of the South. Thank you for guiding us into this light from the fire. And the wind of the East blows us from the South around to the West, to the waters of the West that come and wash over us and refresh us. And the black bear, Ah, my friend, the black bear comes to take us into her cave of introspection. And at the cave, there the Morrigan stands to guard us, to protect us so that we may sit with the ancestors and listen and learn. And we say, thank you. And we move from the waters of the West to the North, to the element of earth. And in the north says Danu, Danu the mother of the Tuhade of the Celtic line. And she calls us, she challenges us, she, she asks us, she begs us to stand up as warriors of the heart, to be who we came here on earth to be, to live that to our greatest potential and help uplift the consciousness of the collective as we move forward in this space and time. And I say thank you. And I come back full circle to the center. And I say thank you to the sun and the moon. We honor you today, beautiful dark moon. And we say thank you to the planets and the stars. Thank you to all that is above. And I bow in honor to the Mother Earth. We thank you for letting us walk upon your skin. We thank you for your arms embracing and holding us. We thank you for the life that we have here on this planet Earth. We say thank you to all of the beings and we honor and respect the beings of the air, the beings of the fire, those warm blooded animals that walk on four legs and two legs. We say thank you to the beings of the water. Thank you to the beings of the earth, the rooted beings, the rocks, the minerals, 
all of those who creep and crawl upon the earth. We thank you for all, for all that is. And as we come back to ourselves, we say to all of the guides and all of the beings, thank you in the many traditions I say, aho, ashi, amen, blessed be, alhamdulillah, and so it is. And so I bring my pyramids back and put them on the table beside me here as we go through ceremony today. Mm. And welcome, welcome. I know some of you have come in while we were doing the, uh, the directions, welcome. And we will honor Imbolc today, but before we do that, let's hear from the dark goddess or from the dark moon herself. She calls us, she calls us to remember the messages of the dark goddesses. And today, the goddesses with us, the dark goddesses are the Kaliak and the Mordigan and Sekhmet and Black Madonna. And they come with us as we go into ceremony. So I'd like to present uh, just a few slides, a few pictures for you as we look at the moon and we look at Imbolc today. So the moon has moved into Aquarius somewhere around midnight last night, somewhere between January 29th and February 1st. The moon went into her total darkness. And this is a picture, it's, you know, when you see the full moon, there's, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the dark moon, there's not much there. And this was a shot that was taken just, um, it's a little beyond the third quarter, just before it went into the, uh, into the dark moon. And I love this representation of the moon. This came from Wikipedia. And of course it goes faster than I would like it to go, but it's the dark phases and the light phases of the moon. And it gives me such an appreciation of remembering, of remembering each of these phases and knowing that there's some energy that changes as the phases change. This picture was sent to me by my friend Joy in Texas, um, near uh, Austin, Texas. And this was taken January the 29th. So just uh, a couple of days ago, and the moon again was almost at that new moon phase, but had moved into Aquarius. And this little dot over here, that brilliant light in the morning, uh, sky, the just as sunrise begins, that's Venus. Venus, who has rebirthed into the morning star. She sat in the dark for several months, and now she's become the morning star. She asks us to reevaluate as she has rebirthed to reevaluate our values, our self-worth. What are we doing here? And are we awakening and, and following our purpose? And so she asks us to reevaluate our relationships with people, with money, with resources. So as we go through this ceremony, think of those things. And there's Venus as she emerges as the morning star. Coming out, coming to us. And she is looking, looking for Mars. Venus is known as the harmonizer. And she and Mars will meet, come around to our full moon in just a couple of more weeks bringing the divine feminine and the divine masculine together. So we are in quite 
an auspicious time right now. And as we're in this dark moon, Venus asks us to complete our shadow work so that we can step into that harmonic vibration with the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Venus and the dark goddesses call us to sit with the dark night of the soul to do our shadow work. And usually, usually we think of the dark night of the soul as this terrible thing that we experience. But really, this is an alchemical process. It's a transformation of going into the sorrow and the pain of life, of being a human, and transmuting that sorrow and pain into joy and bliss. So the alchemy teaches us to use the darkness all of the pain, all of the sorrow, all of the heaviness, and let it fuel our fire to grow and to thrive. And the dark goddesses are with us, the Morrigan from the Celtic line. And there she is with the snakes wrapping around her legs as a part of her being with those enormous wings coming up and around. She's a warrior goddess. She's a protector. She even goes to the battlefield to take the souls of the dying to the other world so that they can live again in another form. And her counterpart in the Egyptian line is the Sekhmet. And there she is with her human-like body, but the head of a lioness, with all its fierceness, yet all its protective guardianship of her pride. With a solar disk on her head, and again the snake coming out from her brow and from the solar disk. So they are a fearsome pair. And then there's the Black Madonna there to take us into another aspect of ourselves to awaken so the three of them come today they come to bring forth whatever sorrows whatever darkness you need to journey with as we go into meditation in just a minute to work with that dark energy and transform it transform it into bliss. They call us to look with within, to sit in the darkness and learn from the ancestors. The moon, the moon holds memories, memories of the millions of our ancestors who have honored the moon. Let those ancestors speak to us today. Let us hear their wisdom and help us release our ego's demands. Let us be open to divine guidance. So I take you with my beautiful black bear. And so go with me for just a few moments into meditation and you can sit and look at the picture of the black bear or you can close your eyes and truly go within yourself whatever works for you as we go into this journey into the darkness. So just take a deep, slow, easy breath in and breath out. Breath in and breath out. Calming yourself, bringing yourself into a safe place. And the black bear, my brother, my sister, the black bear, comes and takes your hand, takes you through the waters of the West, and takes you into her cave of introspection. So go into that cave and know that the Morrigan is standing at the mouth of the cave 
keeping you safe and listen to the voices of the ancestors. They're calling you to remember who you are, to remember why you came to earth, to remember what it is that you need to do today. What is this about in the darkness? So sit for just a moment in the silence. Sit with the black bear and listen to the ancestors' voices. black bear comes now taking your hand and leading you from the cave leading you out into the dark of the night just as the sun begins to rise and so begin to crack your eyes just ever so slightly letting in that little bit of light and a little more, perhaps blinking your eyes, coming back into awareness, back into the one. And the black bear comes with you to sit with you in this journey through the, through the rest of our ceremony today. So know that the Morrigan, that the Black Madonna, the Sekhmet, and the black bear are all there with us, lined up around you to give you the support and the guidance to help you remember who you are and where we're going from here. So coming back to, to the present, We'll move into a bit about the Imok. This is a picture from Yorkshire, UK. And it's hard to tell, but this is obviously in ceremony with, with their torches lit, but it's the green man fighting Jack Frost. The green man from the spring 
fighting Jack Frost from the winter. This is what Imok is about. And if you still have snow on the ground, I do. I still have snow here, right out my back door. And if you still have snow on the ground, walk on that snow, walk in it, touch your feet down or put your hands on it. And remember, remember the warmth of the summer. Remember the warmth of the summer. The sun is returning. And so draw an image of the sun on the snow. That's what I did. This is literally a photograph of the snow out my back door. <laughs> and I drew the face of the sun because I know the sun is coming. I know that it's coming. And that's what Imolk is about. So if you still have snow, or if you have snow again before we truly reach into spring, then please draw an image of the sun on your snow. Imolk, sometimes called Bridget's Day, is that transition place um, when we talk about the threefold goddess of the mother, maiden, and the crone. And so this is the crone growing tired, growing tired, not quite ready to totally go into the cave, but she's getting weary. And the maiden is coming forth. And as the maiden comes forth, the snake, the snake is slowly uncurling. The snake, the snake on my arm, if you can see it there. The snake is deciding, is it time to shed a skin yet? Is it time to come truly above on the upper side of the earth? We shall see. Imolk is one of the fire festivals that commemorates that passing of the winter into the agricultural new year. And these festivals, especially in Europe at one point, were always accompanied by huge blazes. At one point in time, they would take a wooden wheel. I've seen pictures of wheels that are taller than you know, six feet across or something. And they light them on fire and roll them down the hill into a lake. That's one of the traditions of Imog. Ah, such a, an amazing time to know that the sun is returning. That light, that fire represents the warmth, but it also represents our illumination and our inspiration so that we can move toward our creativity. So at, at Imolk and uh, several days either side of it, there are many places, uh, ancient sacred sites that were built for that light to come in. This is Log Crew or uh, Sliv Nikeliak in the Irish language in Ireland um, and sunrise on February mornings, a few days before, a few days after, that sunrise comes in, shines in through this door where you can see the light and shines on those stones. And so now the picture is flipped around. There are carvings and writings on the stones. And that's me coming out of the darkness with the light coming in, the emergence of the sun. So the light is here and here coming through and shines all the way into this cave-like structure behind me, shines into that light and illuminates those carvings. There are many places in uh, in lots of different countries. This is another one in Ireland at Grange Stone Circle where the sun set at Imolk 
shines down this passageway, this entryway, between those two large rocks, and they are huge. They're maybe taller, taller than me. And it shines directly across to the other side of the field, illuminating the stones over there. And this, this particular circle is um, known to be the largest stone circle in Europe. So it's, it's a very large circle, and the sun comes right through, shining to the other side. Imolk is a gate of emergence. This is my friend Maggie, who's on the call today. Maggie and I did a Samhain ceremony in uh, November. And uh, this is Maggie dressed as the dark goddess. And she's emerging. She's coming out. Her hands are up and open. And she's ready to step into the light of the Imolk. So Imok is, is spelt many different ways, sometimes with a G, which is the way I tend to spell it, but it's also spelled with a C and other different ways and other names. But the energy of all these are about the coming of spring. And so things to do associated with Imok are to start the seedlings for the coming of spring. In your house, if your weather is still too cold to put seedlings in the ground, seeds in the ground. Traditional things are to make a corn dolly or to make Bridget's crosses. Another is to clean your windows. And I, this picture, I had to put this one in the slide. This is in a museum in Ottawa, Canada. And it, I, when I was thinking of cleaning the windows, this picture came to mind because of all the many, many incredibly beautiful windows in this, in this part of the museum. So it's a time to do a cleaning ceremony, opening your doors for the new energy to come in, cleaning your door, cleaning your window, cleaning your closets, organizing your home. It's a new time. Step into the new time. And another tradition is to eat spicy foods in honor of the sun, spicy and full body and strong flavors. The sun is returning. And another tradition is to light every lamp in the house or to put candles in every room in honor of the sun's rebirth. So the question for you I have is what will you do this year for the sun's returning? So I'm going to stop the share and come back to full screen. And I know that uh, some of you on this call, let me, let me go to um, the screen view gallery, there we go. And if you would, um, if you if you can, if you'd like to, turn your screens on so that we can see one another. Uh, we have 27 right now on the call. And if uh, some of you typically um, celebrate Imolk, I'd like you to tell us what some of your traditions are or some of the things, you know, like washing of the door and the window is one of those traditions. What are some of the other traditions that you have done or that you know about associated with the rock. Yeah, just unmute yourself and go ahead and speak up. Hi, it's Ellen. One Hi. Thing, one thing I found that I've really enjoyed doing, which I was thinking I might do today, is um, I take a candle and a mirror and I shine the light into all the corners of every room, reflecting the candle light with the mirror into the, into the darker places in the room. Yeah, I like that. I like that very much, yes. Using the light in a different way and the, the mirror reflecting, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Anyone else with any traditions that you have, have done or, or plan to do in these 
next few days. Well, how about this? If you've never done a ceremony with MLK and have never practiced it, based on what little I've told you about, I haven't given you a lot of history on it today, but what can you think of to do? What are some of the things that, that you might add to the conversation with, uh, with different kinds of things? One of the uh, door washing ceremonies that you can do is to use vinegar and water and literally wash your door and with that door say a blessing that all who enter my home come uh, and welcome and, and things like that. So can you think of any other ways to do those kinds of things? There's Maggie, the dark, the dark goddess coming into the light. <laughs> what would you suggest, Maggie? Wearing hot pink today. <laughs> well, I don't have a tradition, but I'm very inspired by what you've shared, Peggy. And um, but I woke up this morning feeling like it was time to clean out my house. <laughs> um, and so I have already started doing some reorganizing and re-cleaning. And I have some projects that I want to start as well but it's about organizing and it's about cleaning. And that's in my heart. I feel like I want to do that today. Yeah, someone else who's not with us today sent me an email and said that, that she had been called to do the, the cleaning and the clearing of the closets. And uh, there, there are a couple of astrologers uh, that I've writings that I've seen are talking about the planetary movement is such that we need to be clearing out, cleaning up, moving out. <laughs> what else? Anybody else have the, the, the cleaning, the cleaning bug, or is there anything else, something different that you can think of to do? Um, I'm thinking of changing right now. I have a winter type wreath on my door and it has a snowy owl on it but i think it's just change that out and bring in something a little more with green or something and also my little flag that i have is very wintry so change that to something i'm not sure what yet but yeah yeah, and, and that's part of Imbolc, you know, it's it's not like winter in the Celtic world has gone away by February 1st, but it's the calling of the sun. It's the bringing the sun into your world because you know it's coming back. It's just not here quite yet. <laughs> Janet. Yeah. Um, although I don't, I haven't done anything traditionally, but I was called today to, um, go to the labyrinth down in the River Arts District of uh, Asheville. And right beside it was a Clutie tree. I was just amazed at, um, to have that be highlighted. Um, it's the first time I'd ever been there. Um, but I also really love the idea of lighting all the lamps and lights in every room. So definitely we'll do that. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful tradition, yeah. Mm. I don't know if um, anybody's crafty, but you know, it can, I've done this before. It can be nice just to create a journal page around the holiday, around the ceremony time and work with the different symbols. It just takes you deeper into what they mean. Mm. Mm -hmm. The, oh, I didn't, I didn't manage to get my bracelet on, but I have a, a Celtic knot bracelet. You know, those Celtic knots are, uh, you know, just the, the, the weaving in and out and around reminds us how everything is interconnected. And that cleaning that we're called to do is not just cleaning, it's pulling those threads from one place and another place and moving, just like changing the wreath on your door changes the energy of the place. Yeah. 
what else? Anything else? I, I think there's something in chat. Um, uh, yeah. Elena says, I'm not inspired to do physical outer cleaning, but a lot of inner clean, clearing. Yes. And connecting. Yes. Yes. Um, connecting spring bulbs that are starting to pop up. Yes. Oh, she's in the Pacific Northwest. Yes. The snowdrops and the daffodils are popping through. And often they're popping through here, but not this year. <laughs> At least not in my part of <laughs> of western north carolina mine are oh. <laughs> i'm just two miles from her down the mountain um but yeah i've got crocuses blooming wildly blooming oh. and flocks blooming and <laughs> the daffodils are about this high oh my goodness <laughs> i i look a different environment i i can look out my door here and I see mostly white. Um, there, there are brown patches mm -hmm. that were not there yesterday, but <laughs> but there's still plenty of snow here. <laughs> and I'm sure that some of you in Canada, because I know there are a few of you on the call in Canada, have much snow still. I'd like to say that I didn't know why, but last week I washed all my windows on the inside. So that was a good thing. Yeah. And uh, I think today I will light a candle from my Bridget's candle from Ireland and go through my house clearing and cleaning. That feels like a good thing to do. Yes, wonderful, yeah. Yeah, good plan. Um, something that's been relevant for me, can you hear me? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, something that's been relevant for me recently um, is related to relationships. And I've been reaching out to some of the important people in my life of the past that haven't been around as much and preparing myself to let go of some of the people that are currently in my life that are no longer serving a purpose of helping me grow and helping me move forward. Um, and interestingly enough, one of those long-term connections was the person that volunteered to come help me do some physical release last weekend. And she helped me take things to goodwill, move things to storage, throw things away, <laughs> um, really make a big transition so that I could have my space back um, because I've been in a lot of transition and it just started piling up the boxes and the bins and nothing was going away. So it was very nice to have someone that has served a huge part of my life to come back around full circle and help me with that cleansing to move forward into this time. Mm. Yeah, really important. A, a, a double, the, the physical things and the relationship things, yeah. yeah. I just wanna say that I, um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm, I'm in Mexico City, so we don't have snow. We don't have, it's been pretty warm today, so we have nice warm weather. But I'm thinking of um, using sage and doing a cleansing of my house with sage. Mm -hmm. And also the candle sounds really nice too. I've never done a ceremony for this day before, but I think that using sage will be nice to do a cleansing. Yeah burning um mine has gone out now you know i was burning sage earlier but a lot of times people are not comfortable with burning either because of allergies or just because it's a small space and um one of the things that you can do in place of that is literally taking this is rosemary or any other herb these are this is dried sage but instead of pushing the smoke around, you take the, um, the herbs and clear the air with the fresh or the dried herbs that, uh, that can help you lift and change and, and move the energy. Yeah. Ah, what else?
We haven't talked about um, crystals, but that's another thing that, that you could use uh, in ceremony too, both for cleansing or just um, just using it. I, I didn't um, pull, I mean, I have it right here in front of my, this is my um, dark moon stone. And I know uh, a couple of you have a dark moon stone as well. And so this is a really good stone to use with the full moon, I'm sorry, with the new moon, because it's a dark moon. And um, working with that, sometimes just sitting and holding uh, a stone, it doesn't have to be a moonstone, but any particular stone, and just sitting with the energy of that to help you open, open that, that space within you to let the ancestors give you some guidance. Anything else that anyone can would like to add? Oh, I, I love the idea of the lights, you know, going from room to room. And uh, I just remember that uh, yesterday um, we had someone who came and fixed our, we had a little lamp outside that only worked with um, gas and my husband wanted it to be electric, you know. And so now they just, they changed it, you know, and it has a light bulb and it's um, every day now it's going to turn on uh, when night comes, you know, so it's, it was incredible. It was just so perfect on time for this uh, season. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your, your ideas. I hope that, that you find um, some, some beautiful things to do in connection with, um, with Imbolc and with the new moon, because the new moon is a time for beginning the, the basic work on new projects so that you're in the thinking stages of it. And as the phases move around, when we get to the new moon, you're ready ooh, to really put that, that project, that idea into action to let it manifest and let it glow in the, in the moon. So in two weeks or about two weeks, um, yeah, I think it is two weeks today, we'll have a, a new moon, I mean, from the new moon to the full moon ceremony uh, with that transition. And at that point, I'll talk a little bit about Venus and Mars and what's going on with, uh, with that kind of transition and everything. So, so thank you for being here. And if you are interested in the, the class that starts tomorrow, you, you still have some time to register. I know quite a few of you on the call today are, are already in the class. So um, thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm so very happy. Yeah. In, anything else anybody wants to say before we before I sign off? Well, thank you.